Oh, man, we got a lot of folks in here. Let me get my brother McCall in here. My good, good brother McCall. Because we are in here deep. We are in here hella deep. Brother McCall. Where's my brother? My brother, how are you, sir? Oh, you know your brother living the dream and winning, as usual. Yes, absolutely. Look. What's on your mind? The other night, I'm at dinner with some friends, and it includes, you know, our Ethiopian family here. And a person asked me, Mikhail, what does it feel like? How does it feel being Black American? And it was one of those ear Hutton moments and everyone stopped. It seemed like damn near everyone in the restaurant stopped and looked at me. I stood up mm. and said, like a superstar. And everyone applauded. <laughs> I'll land with that. Wow. <laughs> Love you, great my, black family. My man, I appreciate you, brother. Man, man, man. Let's get Jeff. What's up, Jeff? Hey, uh, Tariq. I always hear, you know, complaining about white supremacy. Um, if you don't like it here, why don't you go to a black country where you can govern yourself? Well, okay. Well, y'all control that too, unfortunately. The white supremacists control the black countries too, unfortunately. So no, no, no. Here black people control black countries. Oh, how so? Because there's more black people in leadership positions in the government. Yeah, they control those countries. But you, the white supremacists, you guys control the trade routes and you control the economics. No, no, no. You, you control the trade routes. You control the economics in those black countries. No. no. Which one? Which which black country controls the trade routes there? That's not controlled by the white um, supremacists. The country that was given to freed black slaves, Liberia. Oh, if you don't, Jeff, now well, you're trolling. Jeff, 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 Jeff. And it weren't it wasn't free black slaves. See, you already framed it as a lie. Free black slaves. <laughs> yeah, they freed the slaves Liberia. and they sent them to Liberia. Because I thought they would have a no, better life. Didn't. No, they didn't, Jeff. No, they didn't. They didn't free anybody. And why would the white supremacists free people and then send them out? What are you talking about, Jeff? No, they didn't. Yeah. Think of think about your life. We gave you, you think freedom. A white, but, but, no, 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 Jeff. Think about. Let's unpack your lie. You think a, a white slave owner who paid twenty, the equivalent of twenty thousand dollars. Well, there was early that, movements to free the slaves stop, in the north. Jeff, Jeff, stop, stop, because we're going to unpack your lie. You think a white slave owner who paid the equivalent of twenty thousand dollars for a black person was going to free him and let him go to another country? Do you think they were going to do that? That's what they did. They freed the black slaves. There was early <laughs> movements to free slaves before the Civil War in the North. No, 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 no. No, they didn't, sir. They were free black people. Many of them weren't slaves, but you had free black people who went over there to Liberia. They weren't slaves. They weren't sending any slaves over there. They were sending free black people over there or free black people were volunteering to go over there. And they said, oh, um, hell no. When they got over there, they were like, this is not the business. So what are you talking about, Jeff? No, black people that used to be slaves, they got freed because the white man gave you freedom. And you went back to you went to Liberia and you didn't build shit. So this whole sir, thing about we built this country, you had sir, your chance. Sir, sir, Liberia, many of the people who went over there were from the Caribbean, and also they were from other parts of Africa. A small percentage of foundational Black Americans went to Liberia, and many of them went over there and died because of the diseases. So that was a cluster flop from the beginning. And the economics were still controlled by the white supremacists. So you think they didn't have their hand in that? Jeff? Every fucking day, you just sit there and white supremacy, white supremacy. When are you going to look yourself in the mayor? Look in the mayor. What the hell is the mayor? What kind of white supremacist accent is that? Are you from Wisconsin? What the hell is a mayor? And, sir, are you going to look at your birth rates? 
you're upset with us because uh -oh. you, have, uh -oh, you have them slow white supremacist birth rates. You're going extinct as a white supremacist, and you're mad at Foundation of Black Americans, sir. You already have everything you need to have. Why are you still mad? We don't control anything in white supremacist society, yet your bussy is itching because of us. Why is that? Well, Jim? I'm glad you brought that up because the black births are actually in decline now. Sir. So your birth, you did all this talking on the white birth rate. Now you're in, your births are in decline. Man, our birth rates are fine. Go look it up. Everyone in this room. Your births are in decline. No, we're not, sir. We look are we have we have no problem having children, sir. As and the reason why you don't control shit here, because you didn't build anything. Um, Jeff, yes, we did, and you're ungrateful. You didn't build so, anything. Jeff, if it weren't for us building this beautiful nation, you would still yeah. Sir, Jeff, you would still be in the Ireland. The only thing you did was... Jeff, um, Jeff, Jeff, you would still be in Ireland picking headlights out of your pubic hairs, sir. Yes, we did, Jeff. You would be running through the jungles naked with flies on your face if Jeff, it wasn't for the white supremacy. Jeff, Jeff, foundational black Americans created a lane for you, Jeff, and you know it. You know that. No, no. Slaves don't create lanes. Slaves listen to their manager. Do they listen to their master? You didn't. You didn't organize this country. Yes, slaves don't create lanes. Yes, we do, Jeff. Yes, we do. Because when the white supremacists tried to do it on their own, they failed, and you guys cannibalized yourself. You started eating each other, Jeff. That's how savage you white supremacists are, sir. No, no, no. You failed, and that's why you ran up to white people in the north during the Great Migration, during civil rights. You were running to white, pe white people because you failed. What white people were we running to in the north? We were going to black areas, creating our own lanes up there, sir. So what are you talking about? No, no. You were running to white people to help you. Sir, it was the middle of segregation. We couldn't live in white neighborhoods. Black people were going to the North, creating things like the numbers market, which eventually became the lottery. We were up there creating lanes for ourselves, aggregating our money among ourselves, sir. And until you white supremacists started sabotaging that, too. So, yeah, we 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 kind of do good when the white supremacists are not in our mix, sir. Right. Jeff. Jeff, you're going to play this game of muting me and acting like you're fucking winning the argument. Well, Why Jeff, do you do that? Um, well, Jeff, you drop your phone in your vat of meth mix, sir. I can't control whether you drop your phone. Just put the put the top on the meth pot and don't let your phone drop, man. So, Jeff, why are you so angry with foundational black Americans? I mean, you, you got you a nice trailer park. You got a meth pipe. Number what? one, I don't like the name foundational black Americans because you didn't create the foundation to anything. Oh, yes, we did. We were the foundation. You just listened to the fucking slave master. We were the, found were we were the foundation of this country, every single part of it. We were the capital of this country. We were the workforce of this country. We were the soul of this country and are. We are literally the foundation. If it were not for us, there would be no United States of America, sir. And this is a fact. Isn't that a fact, Jeff? No, it's absolutely false. Um, Jeff, you tell me why the North had less slaves. They had less slaves, and they abolished it quicker, but they industrialized quicker. They had more infrastructure built. Slavery was in full swing in the North. It was in swing in Massachusetts. It was in swing in New York. The North had slavery, sir. In fact, slavery started in the damn North. What are you talking about, Jeff? Come on. I said, why did they have less slaves, but oh, they industrialized quicker? Slaves good. made up around 4% of the North. Sir, they weren't widespread like that. Uh, sir, the slavery was... No one ever effect. needs slaves. All slaves do is listen to the master. Sir, the slavery was... We organized this country. We put this country together. And you know it. Sir, okay, then why, when you tried to do it on your own, why did y'all die off and fail? Okay, That's without... That's not my... true. It's true. That's not true. Name, name any part... We of... landed in New Hampshire, 
and right. didn't see any slaves there for like 40 years. What year and when they got there, we never at like 4% of the what population. Are you talking and we set up a fishing um, industry. Dude, this was after. The fur trade. We were coal mining. After, after. I'm talking about before the 1600s, sir. Don't talk about what happened after when the economy from our slave labor was in full swing. Yeah, y'all came over and started thriving because we stimulated the economy for you white supremacists. I'm talking about before there were black people who were there stimulating and creating the economy. Where did you succeed? Wait, wait, wait. You do know blacks weren't even 10% of the no, no, population no, no, no. Okay. to 1,700. No, 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 you're, gonna ba you're not going to babble. Answer my question because we've, we've done this before. Before black people were here stimulating the economy in the early 1600s, where did the white supremacists build anything on their own in North America? Go. Um, they built the first school in Boston. What year? That was around, I believe, uh, 1620. I don't think there was any slaves there uh, to like. What, what school? In I would have to look it up, but I looked it up, and there wasn't even there wasn't even slaves in the fucking Boston at what the time. What school in Boston did they? The Boston Latin School, the Boston Latin School. So we built the first school. Look, you didn't the do Boston. anything that whites didn't tell you. You were just listening to white people. You didn't fucking set this country up. Did you say the Boston Latin School? Yeah. Yeah, that was like 1635. What you talking about? You uh, I believe. No, yeah, yeah, it was 1630. But there was oh, no yeah, slave. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. The, the economy was stimulated. So yeah, don't don't come and try. The economy was stimulated. It was already stimulated by us by then, dude. It was. Already it was already stimulated, stimulated before no, you no, came no, into I'm, the colony. Okay, when what what economy was stimulated? What economy did the white supremacists build before we came and stimulated the economy? All right. Slaves landed in Jamestown in 1619. Uh -huh. By 1614, they were exporting tobacco. They were exporting all type of fucking shit. And you, oh, okay. you didn't sir, start anything. Sir, you sir, can't sir, no, they were not successful in it. They were not successful at exporting tobacco in 1614. They were damn near starving to death in 1614. No, no, no that's not true. That is true. And a new Okay, Jeff. Uh, I don't want to hear no more lies. Jeff, we lying his ass off. Okay. Jeff, the lion, white supremacist. Boy, this dude is all over the place. We catch him in lies all the time. Y'all weren't building nothing. You see, he keeps throwing these dates out. I say, every time I say, Jeff, name before the 1600s when you guys were anywhere remotely successful. The Boston School of Latin, dude. Dude, that's 1635, asshole. Stop it. Oh, yeah. In New Hampshire. No, that wasn't. A, that, was, uh, that was 1700s. He's, he think he's slick. He's just starting yelling out stuff like we don't know the dates. Who the hell you think you're talking to, dude? Stop it. This is why you got to know history with these dudes, man. They start yelling out stuff and screaming out stuff and lying. Yeah. I don't like Foundation of Black American, dude. I don't like it. See, they don't like that, which is good. Because, see, the thing is, it, it Foundation of Black American, that's a term that has dignity. And it's a term that they can't remix. That's why I told y'all, man, that's a phenomenal term to use. See, they don't like, they don't have a problem with Negro, colored. They ain't got, they ain't got a problem with that. When we self-identify, and we give ourselves a name that has dignity, patriotism, and pride, and black empowerment. Yeah, so they can't say that we're not patriotic. We're talking about being black American. Not only black American, we're foundational black American. We're owning the fact that this would not be a nation of success without us. These are facts. These are 100% facts. If it were not for us, there would be no United States. We have to stop letting these people make it seem like we immigrated here um, involuntarily or whatever. We are not equivalent to immigrants at all. Let's stop this whole narrative about we were brought to the United States. We were not brought to no damn United States. 
we built the United States. There was nothing to be brought to. There were no United States to be brought to. We built this shit from the ground up, from scratch. We are different than anybody. I'm not going to let no flea-bitten white supremacists who failed somewhere in Ireland, who had to get on a boat and eat rat meat for three months to come over here and, and thrive off of us, tell me shit. You're not about to tell me anything. You, sir, are a failure. You came over and ate off of us. And these are the realities of life. Let me see who we got. Let's get um, Mohammed. Got a lot of folks in here. Mohammed, hop in, Mohammed. Yes, Tariq. Hi, how are you? How are you, Mohammed? I'm doing good. Um, happy to be here. And we can have a talk. The brother before me, uh, you know, the, the one called. Because, um, well, because I am brought your arguments easily and they okay. make you look like a fool. So let's go ahead okay, if you're ready. Got it. Okay, so now, Muhammad, are you one of these people who are ashamed to admit where you're from? No, I'm not. Where are you from, sir? Well, um, I was born here, but my family are from Africa. Okay, so what part of Africa is your family from? Africa's yeah, from my, no, Djibouti. So, yeah, basically Somali, Djibouti. Som you're Somali. Yeah, yeah Somali. Djibouti, Somali, yeah. But that's the country my Got family's it. from. So let's talk now. So Got it. I want to talk about, I want to talk about, and, you know, the success of my community in, say, Minnesota. Right. Um, one thing I've noticed is every time a Somali gets arrested, it's because of the influence Black Americans had on him. You guys are freaking influencing our young in a negative way they listen to your godforsaken music that's ghetto and nasty and once they internalize that they start talking yo 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 dog what's up dog you know that's improper and i tell them stop this is not you so, yeah. so 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 the child soldiers and the people running around in your homeland um robbing each other killing each other over in your homeland to the point where you have to flee what rap records do they listen to there okay um so like i said i'm from Djibouti, but if you're talking you, you have to talk about my country and it's doing well it's a middle income african country it's middle income then, what, why, then why are you not there in, in enjoying the middle class money why are you not there and i came here for economic opportunities i went to the oh i i went to oh, the so that no, no. Because there were none. No, it's, it's, because it's not. There were no, because there were none in your homeland, right? No, right? no, it's, it's were... not that. It's just, just like in the UK, for example. I'll give you an example. U.S. You make way more money in a, for, for example, as a doctor in the U.S. versus UK. So you see a lot of UK people coming here as economic migrants. Doesn't mean doesn't mean that in, in the UK is a shithole. It just means America is one of the greatest countries. So that's all that it means. So there you go. Right. You're right. You're right. I know it is because we've made it that way because we stay here and we fight and we make no. things pop. It was it was white Americans who I attribute. Right. I know why I know you wanna I know you wanna give praises to white people like that. I know y'all no, I, I, love, I, love, I don't love them. Yeah, look, and look, I know y'all love sucking white balls, sir. I know it. That's why y'all come over here to suck white balls. But listen, it was white mommy and white daddy that helped cause the economic devastation in your homeland okay those were the ones who caused the economic strife over in your homeland and sir like my guy said y'all have cat addiction over there y'all own drugs the, the the youth over there are drugged out of their minds what rap records are they listening to over there in your homeland to make them strung out on cat yeah can can i speak um okay so you know those people when they do fight and kill each other, they're doing it for, um, you know, purposes of getting land and stuff like that. When you guys kill each oh, other over colors, 
that's more ignoble. Nobody, that's not a noble thing to die. Nobody, I, will, I will gladly die for nobody, life. Nobody's killing nobody over no color. What uh, what year is this? You think Bro, this I'm is talking about your 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 crip and blood wars, dude? Dude, you guys kill each other. Up, update your update your stereotypes. This is not 1983. Crips and bloods are not killing each other, dude. Dude, dude. Okay, stop it. Stop it. Re- stop. This is not 1985. Crips and Bloods are not killing each other. They're literally not killing each other. That's not a thing. That hasn't been a thing in damn near 30 years. What are you talking about? You haven't even updated your stereotypes. Crips and Bloods. There is no Crips and Bloods war no more. You've been watching old VHS tapes of the movie Colors or something. I know y'all get movies later. You get movies late over there. And Tariq, are you... No, 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 no. You're not going to change the subject. You're going to throw out a 30-year-old stereotype. You haven't even updated your stereotypes. And I'm in Los Angeles. Crips and Bloods are not killing each other, dude. That's not even a thing no more. People don't even trip on that shit no more. So stop it. You guys are... Okay, so so one second, bro. So, so, no, no, no. You guys are over there slaughtering each other with these different ethnic beefs in your homeland and high on cat to the point where you have to flee. Those are the real Crips and Bloods. So, so, see, this is what I mean. When an educated person comes up here... Because you're not educated. You're not educated. You're just tether babbling, sir. Sir, you're just tether babbling and fleeing. And and, and the fact that you have to insult me just goes to show you your intelligence I'm not, level. I'm not insulting you, sir. I'm just stating a fact. You're just tether babbling. You're not... Ed- yeah, but you continue muting me doesn't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not going to tether babble. That's what you're not going to do. You're not going to sit here lying. You're a little man, bro. Uh, um, Djibouti man, you're not going to sit here and lie because you guys have that scam artist mentality. You guys scam and scheme and lie and deceive. And we're not going to allow you to do that. And there's a lot of jealousy and vitriol and white ass kissing. It's the white man. No, no, no. The white man got your country jacked up. They're the ones who put sanctions on your country and um, mess up the ecology and the economy over there. So that's, you know, you, that, that white dick you sucking on. Yeah, can can, that, can I speak on that? I'll speak on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Blame. Let's speak, speak on white daddy. Speak, speak on white daddy. Tell me all the good <laughs> white daddy. Yeah, you guys invented the words and daddy and stuff like that to call people. So that's just weird. But anyways, moving on. Here's the thing, bro. Um, what what's happening in Africa? It's it's something that's self imposed. You know, I'm in the I'm I'm of the view basically. I'm I'm a man. I don't blame others. Um, whatever's right. happening in Djibouti, it's self-imposed. Right. Now, you, if you guys you, learn you to flee. do that, if you guys you, learn to... If, no, 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 no. You flee. That's what you do. Instead of dealing with what goes on over there, you run. Like what we call a biatch. You run, sir. And that's... Yeah, not- I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm done with you, bro. Look, if look, you continue to mute me. You won't let me finish my point. So just it's, right. it's not even worth debating with a ignoramus like you, bro. And, You're an ignoramus, and, and I'm too. Ad- You're a wannabe Arab. A lot of y'all are just wannabe Arabs and wannabe whites, and you come yeah, over you here. Have, you have you have the inferiority. No, so, no, no, no. You're a wannabe. Arab. Have the inferiority complex no, no, to them. That's why no, you continue bringing those people no, up. You have no, 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 no. Alim, Alim. Look, Alim. you have the inferiority complex to them. Alim. You're the one. I pity you. You have an inferiority complex. Stop bringing people up that have nothing to do with this. Talk to me instead. I'm talking to you, Aleem. You fled. You fled your homeland, sir. And you are very vitriolic towards the people who didn't flee. Because there's an honor that we have where we stand and fight. And there's an embarrassment that comes with fleeing. And you want to project your embarrassment onto us, sir. Why don't you deal with that embarrassment on your own? All right. So, <clears throat> see, this is this is what I mean. Um, Tariq, I looked up, you know, various things about you. It oh, basically, oh, I don't give a damn what you look up about me. One thing you look up, you don't see me fleeing. All right, no matter what you look up, it says I, I be all that, but I didn't flee, nigga. It says you're a high school dropout. See, I, so I cannot converse with the high school. Yes, 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 and. How does a high school dropout have more financial success than your whole village? Now, what does that say about your community? 
I'm a high school dropout and I have more financial success than your entire village. You dig? I wasn't what's even that's... born in the village. I was born in the city of Djibouti City. Sir, what what's your birthday? What's your birthday? Yeah. Dude, you're what's a your... high school dropout. What's your what birthday? I... What's your birthday? You know, you, you, you're not going to come at me, bro. You know? What's you're your the, you're basically birthday? No, you're no, the no. wife and you're no no Yazid, what's your birthday, sir? Yeah, this old ass dude, bro. He's forty what? years old and talking what? like this. If I'm forty years old, how old are you? What's your birthday? I'm basically twenty five. What's your birthday? It's what's your birthday? I don't have you muted. Feb February, um, yeah, you did. February 2nd, 1998. Okay, you, okay, you just made that up. No, no, I didn't. February no, you, 2nd, 1998. Your, your, bir your birthday is on January 1st, ain't it? Ah, uh, ha, ha, ha. See? This is what I mean. These are your, your minions laughing there. They're basically just fucking just, uneducated. And, and by the way, my man, Djibouti, that was controlled by the French. So the white supremacists had their foot deep your in... Your minions who are laughing down there, they're as ignorant as... No, 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 no. no. Your homeland was controlled by the French, right? Dude, you were enslaved. You were beaten. You were whooped. You're what are you talking about, bro? You're... You too. You too. And you're being beaten and whooped now. You can talk about us. I can't believe you're equating chattel slavery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're being beaten and whipped now. Right now. That's why you have to flee. What are you talking about? You're being things that never happened. Things that you're an ignoramus. You're basically sir. a high school dropout. Bye -bye. Yes, sir. But I'm not. You're an idiot. Though. But go I'm... fuck yourself and your wife. See it, bro. You Yazid. bitch ass nigga. Yazid, why are you trying to use ebonic slang from foundational Black American? Don't try to talk tough. Don't try to talk tough. First of all, you're too skinny and malnutrition to be tough. All right, he got up out of here. Don't try to sound tough. And you're hungry. You bitch ass nigga. No, 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 no. Nobody's afraid of you. Not with that big forehead and that little skinny body. You're the least intimidating dude on earth. You try to raise up on me, you'll fuck around and have a heat stroke. You're too frail in malnutrition. Nigga, you got to eat some more rice and grains and get your little weight up before you try to toughen up, brother. Come on now. That is so non-intimidating. I'm not afraid of any nigga whose rib cage is showing. All right. Skinny gang, skinny gang, skinny gang. All right. Well, let's get some more people in here. We got a lot of folks in here. All right. Let's get who was this person? Let's get Lauren. All right. Miss Lauren, hop on, Lauren. Lauren Butler. All right, Miss Lauren Butler. Right, Lauren, you want to hop on, ma'am? Hello. Uh oh, okay. hello. Hello, guys. Um, I've been listening to everything since morning. Like, what? what? Okay, what the hell kind of accent was that? I have never. What the hell was that? Okay, that was the weirdest accent I've ever heard. And was that a transgender? Uh, T.S. Giselle, did you know that person? Was that one of your people? Was that some kind of Lithuanian transgender person? I've never heard an accent like that. And the voice was husky. I thought it was a woman. And it sounded like a Dutch transgender person. Like they got on a thong and some wooden shoes. Okay, what kind of shit was that? All right, let's try something else. All right, well, we're getting the weirdos coming in here. All right, let's get, um, who is this person? Blue? All right, let's get Blue in here. Uh, hope, hopefully this person got their minds right. Blue, you want to hop on? Yeah, I just want to say I appreciate you, sir, um, for speaking up for, I guess, for black people. Because... <laughs> Yeah, you know I've learned you can't save every black person, but the ones that's conscious, we gotta all stick together. So these other people trying to downgrade us, I, I don't appreciate it. 
especially when it's our people's doing that. So, I mean, I don't know. So that's all I got to say, yeah. sir. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. All right. Let's get um this person here. Um, audio sucks. All this big stuff seems like Michigan. Stop fucking shit. But I'm not living this. This is the time of robbery. Okay. There we go. All right, let's get um, let's get wake up, wake up Africa. Okay. All right, let's get wake up Africa. What's going on, wake up Africa? Wake up Africa, hop on. Yeah, hello, Tariq. How you doing, man? You all right? I'm good, man. What's going on? What part of Africa are you from, brother? <clears throat> West Africa, buddy. There you go. What's on your mind? Um, just a few questions I have for you. Um, I don't know if that's okay. I mean, I just had some things I would like to, to clarify with you, just to kind of gain some kind of understanding. I, I, All right, let's get it. Okay, okay, yeah. First and foremost, let me ask Tariq, which of the African countries have you been to and when? I've been to a lot of them. I've been to um, the... Tanzania, South Africa, um, um, Zanzibar, Zimbabwe, um, Egypt, Ethiopia. I've been to a few. I've been to a few. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, you went for the purpose of tourism, correct? Um, tourism, basically, yeah. And, and uh, Some people brought me out for a lecture. They brought me to Zimbabwe for a lecture. But yeah, but go ahead. Okay. I mean, the reason I asked that is... Um, if somebody saw you during your trip in Africa and then said to you, oh, uh, Tariq, I think the reason why you're here is because you're running away from your country and you've come here to earn a living. Would, what would you think of such, such individual, knowing by yourself that the reason you're there is different from what that person is saying? What would you think of such individual if you hear such thing by yourself? What would it's be your too opinion? Much work. I, uh, that's too much of a whataboutism and it's all over the place. So what's the point? Because the whataboutism is, is it's it's going over my head. What's the point of what you're trying to say, sir? Let's get to the okay, point. I said, the reason I say that, you see, I listen to, especially when you're talking about uh, a few individuals who spoke and then you said the reason they have to flee their country is because they yeah. have to come to America to make money, correct? Right, now, which is true. To, yeah. to my understanding, right, there is no country in the world, be it Japan, America, China, everyone is everywhere making money. Anywhere they find the opportunity to make money, they make money. That doesn't then mean that where they are from, right? There is no economic growth or that there's no money there to be made. People go for opportunities based on what they know. So I do not think that you're right when you say or when you imply that people go to America because America is the only place they can survive in life. I think that particular idea is, is, is incorrect, Tariq. Don't you think I didn't so? say, oh, I, I didn't say that. I think you can survive in your own homeland, but too many of you choose not to. And the problem is, this is the problem. The problem is when people come here because of what we've done to help them get here, you got to roll the Uber windows up, brother. you got to roll the windows up. You got to roll the windows up. The, 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 the windows are killing me. Um, the problem is when people come here after we've helped them, they have a, a tendency to speak negatively on us and try to denigrate us on our homeland and then tell us what we're not supposed to get. That is a major problem. And we're checking anybody. With that might Brother the Postmates orders are going to have to go on call. Hmm. Brother, do Sorry, I need to let you... Yeah. Brother. Yeah? Okay. Sorry, I, I can't hear you. Can you, can you roll your window up at least in your, your Uber? <laughs> 
Bro, I'm walking on the street, unfortunately. I'm just walking back home, so I'm not in Uber, unfortunately. So that okay. was the wrong guess. Yeah. Damn, brother, <laughs> it's a lot of high activity. What, what, what city are you in with all them cars out this time of night? What, what city are you in? It's not time of the night. You live in a different continent. So where I am, it's about 8.43 in the morning, Tariq. So we have different times. Oh. And do you, does that make sense? Yeah. So you if might it's be at night time. It's 8.43 a.m. where I am. Maybe oh, you, you must be in Britain. Wait, are you in Britain? Because it's 8.43 in Britain right now. Are you in Britain? Well, well, if you check your time well, you can understand that both Nigeria and Britain has the same time when it's summertime. Oh, okay. So, so, so are you... Yes. So are you are you in, I'm Britain? in Britain? I'm as you again. I'm in Britain as I speak. Yes. There you go. Right, that's what I thought. All right, you know, that's what I thought. There you go. All right. So my man, but but you you get the point. And, and look, I love the, the brothers in Britain. I love them over there. I got a lot of respect for them because they show me a lot of love over there in Britain and the UK. They show a lot of love to me. Wow. But so you come what there. happened? Oh, I go, yeah. Well, I'm I'm banned from Britain. I, they don't let me in there now. They banned me from Britain. But I used to go, and I love to go over there. And I'm trying to get the ban lifted off me so I can go back there. But the problem, like I said, we only have a problem with the tether class who come here and try to undermine us. We don't. Really have a problem with that. Yeah. And um, <laughs> now, are, are you <laughs> Nigeria or are okay, you Caribbean? Yeah, go on, go on, sorry. I'm saying now, I'm Niger- you kind of sound Caribbean. Nigerian. I'm a Nigerian. Okay, you're Nigerian. But okay, you, you, you kind of sound Caribbean. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, brother. But anyway, man, thank you so much. So let me get some more people because all them cars driving by. I don't want him to get hit. And, and, all right. I, mean, I still think he's probably driving an Uber. I don't even think he's walking. I think he's over there in Britain driving a British Uber. I don't think he's walking. I think he's delivering orders. He's delivering some damn jerk chicken to somebody right now and some egg McMuffins. Let's get um, some other folks in here. we got a lot of folks in here. And by the way, guys, um, y'all need to check out the movie American Maroon at American-Maroon.com. You guys get the American Maroon Blu-ray. It's, it looks great on Blu-ray. If you want to see the movie American Maroon in high, high definition, that Blu-ray is real crisp and you should get a tangible copy to have. American Maroon is a phenomenal film. My latest film, American-Maroon.com. That's where you can watch the film. American-Maroon.com, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get um, some more people in here. Hey, we got a lot of tethers. A lot of tethers in here. Okay, there are a lot of tethers in the building. Um, Let's get... Um, Saint the Rager, whatever his name is. Saint the Rager. Hop in, Saint the Rager. All right, Saint the Rager. Hop in. Uh, what's up, Tariq? Um, I was going to ask, did you see uh, that thing about Nick Fuentes on that Fresh and Fit podcast? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to, I'm going to save that till tomorrow to unpack that. Yeah, thank you, brother. I, I, I'm going to save that to tomorrow on my Sunday show with Nick Fuentes. It was a whole bunch of quote-unquote sisters all hugged up with Nick Fuentes. That's a whole... I'm going to delve into that tomorrow. I gotta. That's too much to unpack. Um, Beth, Miss Beth, hop in, ma'am. Oh, this is going to be off topic. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I just want Go ahead. Beth. I just want to I'm curious. Is anybody paying attention to what's going on in the skies at all? Like what? What do you mean, Beth? Well, they've been spraying the skies for the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years. We haven't been paying attention. We look up, we say, "Oh, it's a cloudy sky. It's hazy. Beth? Yes? Did somebody sell you mushrooms today, Beth? <laughs> no. Okay, Beth. 
I know this is the middle of the month and a lot of the drugs are kind of stepped on. They don't have the good drugs right now, but you're going to have to wait till the first of the month to get the good drugs, man. <laughs> They're not giving you good drugs. Street, Beth. They're not giving you good drugs, but wait till the first of the month, Beth. Thank you so much. All right. Lord. Okay, let me get some more folks in here. Please don't let them step on your dope. Okay. Those are there too? Okay. Let's see. Um, let's get... Um, Let's get, um, I don't know what your name is, bro. Okay. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce your name. It starts with an A, brother. I don't know how to pronounce that. The brother with the name that starts with an A. Hop on if you can. Yeah, it's Aeschylus. Aeschylus. Okay, that's, that's an interesting name. Where are you from? Is that a Greek name? Or yeah, it's a, well, it's a Greek name. It's a name that's given to me as sort of like a, uh, it's a nickname, really. Okay. Um, but I'm Kenyan. You, are you from Kenya? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what's on your mind, bro? Yeah, my, you know, my question to you is this, right? Um, obviously, you are a black American man who wants to talk about, you know, the struggles with the black American community the improvements, the gains, you know, the changes that have occurred. And you want to talk about, you know, tether groups, you know, these groups that wish to attach themselves to you guys, to attach themselves to your glory, your success, and, you know, attribute it to themselves, right? But uh, my question is this, you know, I really do not see the growth in the, uh, the black American community that you are talking about. I don't see it because I look at... Um, for example, I give you this. I look at the SAT scores, the, the gap between uh, blacks and other groups in America, right? Not just the black Americans, but also the immigrant groups. I don't see great improvements. There was a very big IQ test um, administered, a uh, set of IQ tests administered uh, very recently. I think it was last year, big project, uh, millions put into it. And black Americans did not perform very well. Uh, average IQ of 83 compared to some other groups which are much higher. I'm, oh, sorry. And, you know, this, um, to me, I also see black, uh, other black Africans underperforming in the States as well. But my question is, these changes, I feel like as a group, uh, black Americans, yes, the best of the, the blacks in the world, right, for sure, better than most of us. But I feel like as a group, we are still stagnant. What are your thoughts on that? Okay. Well, the thing is, foundational black Americans, we're fine. First of all, um, we're doing better than other groups, especially from places where you come from, because you guys um, completely failed where your homelands are to the point where not only do you flee, you have to be dishonest about where you're from. Like you, you're not Kenyan. That's not a Kenyan accent. You're from somewhere else. So you're not even proud enough for your no, homeland. No, I grew, up, in I grew up in a... I grew up in Estonia, and I grew up in southern Ukraine, in Crimea, in Alushta. Right. right. Why did you say you're from Kenya? That's, uh, that's where I'm ancestrally from. I'm half Kenyan. My father is Kenyan, and, you know, we take our father's side. What's your mother? My mother is Crimean, uh, from North Fedorovka, um, in southern Ukraine. Right. Yeah, that's a southern Europe. That's like a... That e that's an Eastern European accent you have. Yeah. So you, you didn't want to say that. And I'm, I'm really doubting the Kenyan part. But the thing is, over there in your homeland, even in the southern Ukraine, it's not popping over there. I've been to Eastern Europe and Greece and all of those places. That's why your name is Greek, by the way. Y'all live over there in poverty. Y'all guys are struggling and starving over there. So you don't even use your whiteness to its fullest advantage. So y'all can't sit here and talk about what foundational black Americans are doing. Now, where are you now? You're here in the United States now, are you? Aren't no, you? I'm actually in, uh, well, I'm not in the United States. Since the war, I've had to move uh, elsewhere. I'm in Turkey right now, Ankara, beautiful city. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, that accent again. Yeah. So you guys, you primarily identify as European, probably. I, I really doubt that whole Kenyan thing. I just really doubt that because that accent is too Eastern European. 
But yeah, y'all got to get together over there. Y'all don't really have it popping over there in none of your homelands. So we're doing better than that. I'll say that. No matter how we're doing over here, we go through whatever we go through. But we as foundational black Americans, we are rooted in our strong, deep culture and our resilience. And we're, we're fine. Um, our problem is we try to help all of these other groups who then turn around and talk about what we need to do. Y'all need to start fixing your homeland. That's what you guys need to do. And then come talk to us about progress. But thank you so much. All right. Yeah, that, that, that wasn't no Kenyan accent. Yeah, see, these guys all over the place, they flee from one country to a damn another. They flee all over the damn world and then talk about what foundational black Americans, the, the SAT scores, niggas, stop it. All right, let's get some more people in here. All right, we got a lot of folks. Yeah. Where are my Ukraine, my UK people? Shout out to everybody in the UK. All right. Get um, what's your name, man? Kayak? Kayak? What's up, Kayak? What's up? I see Brother Marcel Dixon down there. Black Voltron down there. Kayak, hop on, man. It's a lot of lovely ladies down here. Either y'all profiles are fake, but the ladies are real lovely tonight. Shout out to the lovely ones, or shout out to your lovely profiles. Y'all might be big, husky, and musty. Yo, um, Tariq, Kayak. How are you, brother? Hey, Kay hey, Kayak, how are you? Good. Do you remember me? Um, no, I don't, unfortunately. Where do I know you from, ma'am? Um, I was a sister, a Somali sister from Australia that you spoke to. Remember? I don't remember. I don't remember. When, how long ago was this, man? This was like uh, probably like a few months ago. Um, and you started roasting that guy from Somali Pirates when I got off. Okay. Well, I, I roast them all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. Um, yeah, Listen. look. Um, so I, I live in Australia, right? And yeah. um, over here, they're, like, they're even starting to talk about like um, reparations for like indigenous Australians, right? Yeah. And um, yeah. they try to, like, link it to reparations for black Americans, saying that because it's not feasible over there, it won't be feasible here because, you know, white Australians are racist as hell here. Um, yeah. And they keep on trying to, like, talk about woke. And I realize that they link everything in with woke because I Googled woke and, you know, Marcus Garvey used a term, like, back in the day, like, before any LGBT crap and all this other gender studies and stuff. So why do you think they're trying to use a black liberation term and then link it with like all this other stuff that conservatively black people aren't even for? Right, right. Well, they try to use things as code words. R woke is like a euphemism for black folks. So it's almost like um, the word thug a few years ago, they would use thug as a euphemism for black people. So they try to use all of these little anti-black code words. So instead of attack attacking a black person, it's like, we're going to attack woke. We're going to have a war on woke. So they use it as a code word and a, and a proxy. So anything they don't like that's associated with black people, just say it's woke and then just attack the word woke. We're going to make woke illegal in school. So what's woke? Woke is whatever we say it is. It's we, I'm white and I say so. So that's an old tactic that they use, old white supremacist tactic. All right, let's get, um, um, who we got? Um, let's see. We got a lot of folks in here. Y'all raise your hand if y'all want to get on, because I got a lot of folks in here. Um, all right, let's get this person arrogant. Let's get arrogant in here. I'm trying to get some new faces in here. Ooh. What's up, arrogant? Yo, what's going on, Tyree? What's up with you, man? I fuck with your videos, I'm bro. That's what's up, man. I love it. What's on your mind, brother? Now nah, I'm just showing love, bro. Uh, I've been watching your videos heavily recently, though. I fuck with you, though, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Man, I love thank you so love. much, brother. Thank you so much. All right, let's get um, Chadical Coder. Chadical Coder. What's up, Chadical Coder? Afternoon. How you doing, man? 
I'm good, man. What's up, Chatticle? Oh, not much. I mean, I it's a couple of things. I mean, that lady mentioned woke. I wouldn't use it to describe anything black. I'd actually describe it to, or I'd use it to describe things that are like Jewish in nature. Like transgenderism is a Jewish creation, a Jewish phenomenon. Um, that's what like a lot of them are using it to to describe. But the funny thing about woke that, though, is used to describe okay, that like things. Make, what's up? What do you say? I see that. That kind of didn't make sense, but go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, but the other thing too, and the funny thing about woke is it's it's what's like a transient adjective. It's like used to describe things that, um, like at, at first, I remember back in like 2016, people were using it to mean um, like, oh, I'm woke. Like I understand the nature of the world around me. It's not like the way that the media would portray it to be where things are like, you know, not exactly how... Or not exactly like what they seem like. It seemed like to be a white, like a, a right wing white people word, and then um, gay people started adopting it at a certain point to say that, like you know, like they're woke about you know, like the oppression that they they encounter in the society and stuff. And so it's it's something that's been co opted and used by a lot of different groups. Actually, it's kind of like an interesting right. thing to do. Um, now, 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 where are you from, bro? Um, I, honestly, I'm from all over the United States. I, I move state to state. I've been in a different state about every six months right now. I'm in California. Got it. All but, right. But well, I do have one question though. Um, and so go this, ahead. this go ahead. lady, uh, you know, she mentioned the Nick Fuentes appearance. Would you ever do a debate with him? I'd kind of like enjoy seeing y'all go toe to toe. I think you could beat him. Yeah. The thing is he's a troll. So it wouldn't, it would immediately get into some troll shit. So it wouldn't even be worth it. He's already, a, there's a couple of reasons why I wouldn't debate him. Number one, he would just troll as a way to tap out. And number two, even if I debunk him, it doesn't affect him because in mainstream white society, he's not accepted because he's a known white supremacist. So he doesn't have a reputation to diminish See, it's only good to debate somebody when their reputation is on the line. He's a clown within white society. Nobody takes him seriously. Well, so the debating thing him about only debate, does... though, is it's about the audience. It's not about the two people going toe to toe. It's about no, swaying no, no, the no, people no, that are listening, no, right? Oh, no, 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 no. It's about the people because if I debunk him and make an idiot out of him, it doesn't hurt him. So all that does is give him clout. That just gives him more trolls to hop on his platforms and check him out. So it's, it's a pointless endeavor. It only gives him clout. And that's why a lot of these white supremacists, they are semi-trolls because white supremacy, that's nothing that you can really debate on a serious manner. They always have to impose it with an iron fist or these people who try to argue these white supremacist talking points. It's always one-sided. And the so-called debate platforms are troll spaces. It always turns into a troll space because you can't argue these white supremacist talking points in a logical manner. I like to go against people who have something to lose. People like the William Shockleys of the world. See, when you debate people like that and get them to um, spew their white supremacist views, see, they have something to lose. I'll, I'll give you an example. One of our good sisters, our scholar warriors, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, she um, debated William Shockley on um, television back in the 70s. And our brother, Neely Fuller, was trying to tell her, hey, look, you want to get him out the paint. You got to start getting him to talk about the solutions. That's what's going to get him out the paint. At the time, William Shockley was a very well-respected um, like scientists, and he was kind of a kind of respected guy in the scholarly circles. He had sponsors, and you know, he was kind of a thing. Um, he did an interview with Playboy, and somebody asked him one of those questions that Neely Fuller suggested about what's the solution for black folks. And then this dude started going into stuff about black people being sterilized and all this stuff. And when he said that, all of a sudden his funding dried up, his ass fell off, he lost something of value by getting put into a trick bag with his talking points because he was a serious person. So those are the kind of people I like to go after, the people well, who have something to... The white supremacist trolls, it's a win-win situation for them. Even if they lose, they get clout. So that's a win-win. So that's pointless. I don't do troll spaces. You yeah, feel me? That. 
I get that. Um, but what yeah. I do have to say though is like the um, the sterilization thing, like that argument. I feel like that's already been like the the status quo, kind of like what what they've been trying to push. You know, like isn't that what the uh, the lady who invented Planned Parenthood's like whole fucking goal was? You know, that's what right, was right. For years, right? Margaret Sanger. Yeah. Mark is saying that's exactly yeah that was that was the whole goal of Planned Parenthood to sterilize black people so yeah and that was part of the eugenics movement and William Shockley was a part of the eugenics movement too and a lot of these people pushing this LGBT stuff a lot of them are connected to what would be the eugenics movement and Planned Parenthood and it's a real heavy dynamic so that's why people need to check out the movie Buck Breaking we go into a lot of that stuff in the Buck Breaking movie but anyway um, but. That- Thank you. Well, yeah. Any more questions about this? Yeah, yeah. Before I go, I mean, so you said that you're going to get into Nick's thing tomorrow or something. Are you doing a stream on that? Are you going to be like reacting to it or what's the. What do you well, I'm going to talk doing? about I'm it. On my, yeah, I'm going to talk about it on my Sunday's joint. So you sound like a fan. You're a fan of Nick, Nick Fuentes? Um, I. How do I put this? Um, I think that a lot of what he said yeah, is okay, very okay, legitimate. Okay. It's like uh, okay, you know, okay, the Jewish okay. thing, is what I'm saying. It's like I think that he, okay, he hits a nail on the head with a lot of that. Okay, let's unpack something. Um, yeah, what's up? You, where's your family from? Um, kind of all over. Uh, mom's like Ethiopian. And nobody's Dad's no, like what's up? Your, your dad. Well, your mom is Ethiopian, and your dad's yeah. what? Yeah, I'm like German, Venezuelan, and Japanese. Actually, I'm kind of like a, an amalgamation of all those things. Right, and that's why we have to delineate. See, this is why foundational black Americans delineate because if you're sitting up here co-signing Nick Fuentes, who has spoken a lot of vitriolic things about black people, and you're sitting up here cock and kiki with that, um, that would make you a tether. Well, I mean, I don't necessarily support everything the guy said, but I, like I said, I think he hits the nail on the head with the Jewish stuff that he does mention. Okay. You know, a lot of it's Do you kind think of- he... Do you believe his views about black people having low IQs and all of that? Do you believe that? Um, I mean, I think that uh, some of this stuff can bear out. Um, I've met a lot of dumb white people in my life. Um, you know, Sir, I've, don't, I've lived in a lot of different don't. states. And okay. so, okay. but the other thing too, and this is like something that's interesting, okay. I went okay. to private and. Okay, I'm not going to let you plebiscite babble. You're not going to do that. I asked you a very specific question. Do you believe that there is some truth to the whole thing about black people having lower IQs? Do you believe there's any truth to that without plebiscite babble? That's a yes or no question. And Nick Fuentes is big on that. Go ahead. Well, like IQ is pattern recognition and the ability to learn. Um, do I think that it's like equal across the board for everybody? Uh, no. And so what I would think is that, you know, possibly I haven't really like looked into any, like the numbers or the data on any of that. Um, oh, okay. You know, I'd be inclined. To- okay. Okay. Let me ask you this. Cause I, that, that's a yes. You do believe that some of that's true. That's a yes. Do you believe that the IQs of Ethiopians your lineage is different from foundational black Americans. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I haven't looked into any of the data on it. Um, I, I wouldn't know how to um, like make a judgment on that. It's like, it's honestly just not something I've really looked into. Um, I would say like maybe, I don't know. Okay. It would depend what the data, like what the data say. Got you know it. what I mean? Okay. So that means genetically and ethnically, you're different from foundational Black Americans. We're all not just Black folks, right? Well, I mean, I never claimed that I was foundational. I never. No, 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 no I didn't. Not, everybody's the same. But, like I think that but, there's uh, differences among all groups of people. Right, but we're different. Like, Asians have like the highest IQ measurement, but they also have like um, a lack of um, creativity. They, you know? That that Nick Fuentes says that same. You're using his talking points. He uses the same analogy. So you agree with a lot of the well, stuff he that says. Map, right. 
like this is uh there's been something that's like measured right and iq is not like it's not how smart you are right it's it's like your ability to learn and recognize patterns right right Right. It's not even like a condemnation to say that like someone has low IQ. Yes, it, it is. Just might mean that they would need to work yes, harder it is. to achieve the same thing no. that somebody else would have a higher no. IQ, right? No, no, that's not true. It is a condemnation. It's used to justify anti-black racism, right? That's the whole purpose of it. That's meant to justify practicing anti-black racism. It is a condemnation. That's the only reason they use it. They literally don't use it for no other reason other than to ultimately justify practicing anti-Black racism. Well, I think it could be justified, or I think it could be used to justify allocation of certain re like resources and um, like teaching habits and uh, right. ways of okay. like in, in imparting so, information to people. You know, it's like okay. Just, Okay. If everybody's not like equal okay, from the beginning, slow down. let's unpack that because if you're going to use that to justify resource allocation, why don't they? If they keep saying how low black people's IQs are, why do they keep depriving us of resources? Because if our IQs were so low, that means we don't know no better. So if we are inherently handicapped. You should take care of people who are handicapped. You should allocate more resources to them. Instead, they deprive us of resources, right? Well, I mean, again, it's like IQ is the ability to pattern, recognize, and learn. And so, like, I would think that that would, like, equate to perhaps right. giving black people, like, another two years of high school or something like that. To, well, like, no, no, no. We catch up. Um, Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make right. sense because you would have to give if there if people are inherently handicapped, you would give them more tangible resources in order to help them. You would take care of that group instead of punishing and abusing and depriving them of resources. If well, they were is giving money, is, yes, is giving money. money correlate to higher scores. That was the question. Like, no, forget how people, people because people if, get if go your ahead. IQs are inherently low. That means this is a handicapped group that has to be taken care of and you can give them the best of everything and they're still not going to rise up. They deprive us of stuff. And if we're already handicapped inherently and then you're depriving us of more things, you're handicapping us even more. Therefore, the IQ argument is used to further handicap and disenfranchise and deprive us right when you say like deprive i'm, I'm i don't want to unpack that because i mean I, I feel like i have a different experience than a lot of people i would really like to understand this like i want to understand 100 percent where you're coming from on this like what do you what do you mean by that economic deprivation we get deprived of resources and economics we get deprived every day in fact, there was a big case today with the Tulsa survivors, the people who were the survivors of the Tulsa race massacre, where there was a bunch of successful black people and they had their successful community bombed and burned to the ground. They're people who are still alive from that. They're in court now, 100 years later, and a judge threw the case out. They're like, eh, no, nothing to see here. That's called economic deprivation. We get that. Well, All the I, time. I actually looked into that. That's a very interesting talking point that I've, I've heard thrown around a lot. And so I started like doing a deep dive into it. Um, I mean, what, what, do, what, do you know what like talking? the full, the full like scope of what actually happened there? Because not a single bomb went off, right? What are you talking about? No, I'm, I'm, ta I'm asking you about Tulsa. I mean, it, it's it, like what happened was there was a, a, a nightclub that was being illegally run. Cops showed up to bust it and shut it down, and then they started attacking the police with like beer bottles. And then what happened was, um, I think like the death toll was like twenty eight people or like forty people or something. It wasn't like a thousand or it wasn't. Like, you know what I mean? It was like relatively small, and the the casualties you know were actually like half white, half black. That's not true. So I mean, we're. Where, where are you getting your information on this from? I'm just like, I, the, like, again, I'm curious. I'm curious to hear where you're coming from. You know, there are pictures and actual motion picture videos from the riots or the massacre. I wouldn't okay. even say a riot. Was there, like, was there like a bomb that went off? 
Yeah, they drop bombs from planes. They dropped can several you, uh, bombs. Can you can you actually link that like in the jumbo? I'm super curious, like because I mean, again, it's like I've I've heard a lot of like conflicting stories on this, and that, that's why I'm like I'm curious. It's something that I'd like to like be able to package up and finally like set away and be like, we can't know exactly what went on there. There's actual pictures of the whole destroyed area. How do you think that area was destroyed? Well, was it post hoc or was it pre? Like, was it like, like, is there video of it happening or is it like the aftermath? And places can be destroyed without bombs. Like, you know, you can like break windows, you can, you know, set fire to things. That was not like a bomb, right? I'm just, I'm like, again, I'm just like, trying to be several, accurate. several of the eyewitnesses said there were bombs dropped down on them. Were all of those people lying? Um, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't look into those testimonies. I didn't see those. Like I mean, again, I looked but into several, it. And I didn't. I didn't see anything about that. Several I'm people. Curious. Several eyewitnesses, and some of the people are still alive. Said there were bombs dropped. Several people said that, and you look at the place, and you can see that it was clearly bombed. So are where there? Can I? Where can I find this? I'm. I'm very curious. Uh, any book about the Tulsa? Like literally any book about that riot. You can find that uh, every story, every article, every book about it. This has been said. This is common knowledge. Okay, I guess I'll, uh, I'll continue my search on that. Um, this has been very enlightening, though. I do appreciate the time that you give me, man. It's uh, All right. it's always interesting talking with you, bud. Um, I'm going to be watching your stream tomorrow. I'm curious. What Thank you, you so much. Okay, and I, I let him go on. FBA family. Do y'all notice how these tethers try to act dumb? That's another that's another deceptive act. All right. This tether is very deceptive. And I want y'all to notice the pattern with a lot of the tethers who called up. They all call up and act dumb. Nigga, brother, I'd like to know if if I'm just trying to get an understanding. I just want to know. I don't know. They they always do the I don't know. They they sit up and play dumb. Just like the 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 caller who was in Britain, he was trying to play dumb, and talking about what's going on in Africa. And I figured out. I'm like, wait a minute. There's a lot of traffic there, and I can hear all the traffic in the background. And I, where are you? From? Are you in Britain? Well, the, the Nigeria and Britain has the same time zones. Oh, nigga, where are you in Britain? Yeah, yeah, you in Britain, dude? I can tell just by the background sounds. Yeah, you, 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 you fled. You fled from your homeland too. If you, uh... These guys call up and play dumb and act like they don't know nothing. And let me tell you something. That's a warfare. That's like a that's a time wasting thing. They use time wasting just like the white supremacists do. Watch out for tethers who try to play dumb. That's a very passive aggressive act. That whole thing about first of all, he's a big fan of Nick Fuentes. When I asked him about the IQ thing, this dude agrees with all of that. This is one of these wannabe white tethers who sit around these white supremacist circles just like the fresh and fit dudes these east african tethers who sit around the the, the alt-right gobbling up their talking points thinking okay yeah they're talking about blacks but they're talking about those blacks over there they're talking about them so they sit there just like fresh and fit kakan and kikian with these damn white supremacists and then when we say we don't want to be associated with you niggas, <laughs> xenophobia, oh no nigga, we, 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 we the same niggas, no we ain't. This is why we delineate. This is why we look at ourselves and acknowledge our lineage and take pride in our lineage because we're different. We don't sit up there cowardly cockon and key in with these damn white supremacists like that and pussyfooting around with their little talking points. And even with the Tulsa thing, that sounds like some shit that the white supremacists then cooked up where they try to deny all the stuff that they've done. 
Tampa. Well, I didn't know that. I don't think there were bombs dropped. Stop it. What are you talking about? This is common knowledge. They clearly dropped bombs on that place. What's this damn denial nonsense you're trying to pull? This is why we don't need tethers in our mix when we discuss things that are pertinent to foundational Black American empowerment. We don't need spokespersons who are non-FBA representing us. This is why we don't. Because they have dual allegiances. Some of these people have secret vitriol towards us. And this is why anytime somebody comes out here trying to speak for us, we say, hey, wait a minute. Where is that dude from? We need to check some paperwork here. We are not allowing any non-FBA person to really be our spokespersons. That's the reason why. And when you look at a lot of these articles about certain things that's pertaining to black society, notice they get a lot of tethers to write about our experiences. And they always put some kind of degenerate twist on our experiences as if we're supposed to support degeneracy. Um, there's an article that they wrote about Kiki Palmer about how, and I'm going to talk about this more in depth tomorrow, talking about how black women are speaking out against black men who are trying to force them to act respectable. And this article was such a degenerate hit piece on black society. And they got some non FBA tether to write the article. We have to call that stuff out. I don't want nobody who ain't FBA representing us or speaking for us. I don't want nobody from a failed culture to speak for me at all because you don't really understand and comprehend our experiences. You don't come from our lineage. We have a certain lineage. We have a certain way of carrying ourselves. We have a certain way that we get down that you are not privy to. You just know peripheral stuff about our culture. And I don't like people misrepresenting us. Y'all don't let us go over there and misrepresent you. Y'all don't let us go over there and try to represent you at all. I have a major problem with that. And we have to check people who try to represent us and misrepresent us under just being black. So we ain't doing that everybody black stuff because everybody, as you saw, that guy here, this Ethiopian dude, sitting up here with these white supremacists. D, everybody ain't on the same mindset. And this dude, the Ethiopian guy, he's probably darker than all of us. You see? We got to check that stuff. All right? Let's get um, Lok Choco. Lok Choco, hop on, man. Lok Choco. All right. While we're waiting on Lok Choco, let's get Dan the man. This Dan the white man. What's up, Dan the man? How you doing, Mr. Nasheed? Uh, what's up, Dan? Okay, this sounds like a brother trying to sound white. What's up, Dan? I'm doing good, sir. Dan, where are you from? This sounds like a black man trying to sound white. Where are you from, Dan? South Carolina. All right, brother, why are you pretending to be white? I wanted to, I knew, I knew, I knew that was the only way I'd come up here. But I really wanted to get your viewpoints on socialism. Okay. All right, let's get some more people on here, man. Come on, dude. Goofy ass. That's the worst accent. Nigga, you sound like you just ate a pig foot. Stop it. That was horrible acting, bro. Very horrible. All right, let's get Assad Ra. Let's get Assad Ra in here. Hey, Y'all don't be in here cosplaying. Come on, man. Assad. What's going on, brother? What's going on, my sisters? What's up? How you doing? My man, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, man. I'm up at three in the morning. Hammond, Hammond, Indiana police out here trying to heart attack my family. <laughs> oh, damn. What, what out there? Uh, Man, you know, 
when you when you targeted and people got their meritorious man you mission, you gotta gotta stand your ground. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right, brother. Well, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. Let's see who else. Uh, who is this? Mr. Iconic. Who is that? Mr. Iconic. Mr. Iconic, want to hop on, man? Because you changed your screen name. All right, man. I'm going to get you out of here. I'm just get you out the, the thing. All right. Let me see. We got a lot of folks in here. Let's get Paul Allen. Paul Allen in here. How many folks we got in here right now? All right, shit. Damn near a thousand. Up late. I know it's like three something, damn near four something on the East Coast. All right. What's up, um, Paul? What's up, Tariq? How you doing? I'm good, Paul. What's on your Paul, what city are you in, by the way? What city? Are you in? Uh I'm in Texas. All right. Have you called in before? You sound I, I've spoke to you a couple times, actually. Okay. I think I remember. What's on your mind? Oh, not a whole lot, man. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm up late. Just uh, thought I'd stop in an FBA space and uh, see what you guys are talking about. Man, you know, we're just chopping it up, doing what we do, man. But anyway, man, thank you so much, Paul. I appreciate you. All right, let's get um, E. Rose in. Arrows, I think that's your name, man. Arrows. Hello, hey Tariq. Hey Arrows, how are you, dear? I'm wonderful. Um, I'm calling from Memphis. It's late. Um, yes, indeed. Don't have much, too much, but I just want to say that you have really changed my life. I have been listening to you literally since 2020, since the pandemic. And I, yeah. I feel like I've listened to all your all your uploads, everything on YouTube for sure. Uh, but I just want to say that I think you are amazing, and I just just keep up just keep up everything you're doing. Um, I have definitely been trying to put my family on. Everybody's not ready for you and the truth yes, that you bring. But I am definitely um, just a big big inspiration. You're definitely a big insp inspiration to me. This is a blessing for me to just even be to be able to say this to you. I can't believe you answered. Yes. I cannot believe you answered. Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry. My yes, children are up yes, right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, and babies to bed. Yes, I'm trying. Indeed. I'm well, trying. But I just want to tell you, um, thank you. I appreciate you, and and you're amazing, awesome, and I just love you, and thank you very much. And I just want to know. I'm I'm just let you know I'm listening. I'm paying attention. So thank you. There you go. Thank you, beloved. I appreciate that, uh, Miss Arrows. Miss Arrows. Were you trying to throw something at a player? <laughs> Lovely lady. Shout out to Miss Arrows. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Arrows. Lovely sister. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's get Giancarlo. Giancarlo. Giancarlo, hop on. What's up, Giancarlo? Yo, um, I just want to tell you, like, um, you know, people will never preach for, like, no um, American black, I think Spanish black, you know, not Afro, um, just normal Ecuadorian. We fight different causes, but um, it's interesting, you know, you have over here, like, 800 people in this, and this rhetoric you throw out. It's, it's so interesting, bro. So fire for you. Oh. I, I, loved, I would love to see your growth and prosperity. Oh, wait, wait, okay. First of all, slow down. Slow down. Because you're kind of babbling, and I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay, now, what what am I saying that you disagree with? Let's slow down without you trying to throw shots, because you're not very good at that. So what what do you have an issue with that I've said tonight? Um, Like, you advocate for, like, Blacks that don't, like, um, represent Africa. It's so disrespectful. Like, that's what, um you know, the Zimbabwe, the whatever, the ass-licking person that you think you are. Um, you're a disrespectful person. And you know what's crazy? Okay, let, okay, let's start over. Now, I know English is not your first language, Giancarlo, because you're not articulating yourself well. You keep trying to throw shots, and you're not articulating what you're trying to say. You keep trying to pass judgment, and you're, you're fumbling and bumbling, and you're not really getting your point across. Now, what do you have a problem with what I've said? You keep saying I'm, you're making up stuff. All right, let's get to the nitty gritty. 
what do you not like about what I've said? I like how, how you're in the your American white daddy um gets ignored by the African white daddy because that's what you like to play with. You like to play with colorism. You know what? I'm I'm gonna leave the space oh. out of out of grace and, and prosperity okay. for you. Well, you, you, you're are, drunk, you're, sir. you are you're you're you are drunk. a fool, bro. I promise you, you are you're drunk. Okay, you're drunk and you're you're another fleer. You're another person. You can't even articulate why you're upset. You're upset because you fled, sir. And don't be upset with me. Fix your homeland like we're telling all of these other people. You can't speak on me, a foundational black American, a non-fleer. Sir, you're upset with me because we're calling out the fleer class. You shouldn't have fled, sir. Why you don't? Why don't you have that anger towards the people who called you to flee your homeland? Go ahead. Um, just like how you haven't gone back to your homeland. Um, I, I, I'm in my homeland, sir. Okay, I'm cool, in cool. my homeland. Um, what capital are you from? What, what, what state? Um, you you sound white. You sound like Northeast. You said you're from Cali. You just, you just back. Thing. I'm in my homeland, sir. My you, you sound here Northeast, for but you said Ca California is your um state. So, what, sir, what part San Diego? States, like, what, where are you the, from? The, I'm asking the, you, like the Crenshaw. United like, explain yourself. The United States, sir. No town, no, no I don't state, have a, no capital. I don't, I don't have a foreign flag like you do, sir, in a country that you ain't even in, right? I have uh, an American flag that was sewn by a foundational Black American girl named Grace Wisher. Initially, I have a flag in the country that my family built, sir. You have a flag where your family fled. Why are you not in the country that you fled from, sir? What's up with that? Why are you upset with me? I'm answering your question with a question. Um, can you tell me the full name of the Statue of Liberty? Sir. If you could tell me that, you I'll, I'll, you, you, you are 100% I am an immigrant. Is, sir, sir, this is not Tether Jeopardy. We ain't going to play that game. Can you tell me the name of the freeway you fled from to get the hell out of your homeland. What's the name of that freeway? Huh? I, I think it's like a railroad in America, I think. You know? Well, yeah, you got Jersey, the hell on. I, I believe. I believe. So, yeah, I believe, when, I think. When you, when you go back and build up the homeland you fled from, then it's you can a, ask It's okay, Tariq. I feel you. You don't want to see black Ecuadorians in power. You know, the, um, Barcelona's in Spain, not in Ecuador. Um, you're, you're a little boy. It's okay. What? What it's okay. It's okay. About, sir, oh, the only thing y'all got coming out of there is MS-13. What are you talking about? What, what What are you talking about, sir? You talking about Barcelona, Spain. You ain't got nothing to do with Spain. Nothing. You can't go to Spain and claim Spanish. Stop it. What you talking about, Giancarlo? I respect you, Tariq. Um, I want to see them, um, you know, I yeah, see yeah, black and LA Rams, stuff, you know, football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You changed that subject. You can't go to Spain. What you up here trying to talk about Spain? You know good and well you can't go to Spain and claim Spain. They're not going like to I said, Like you. I said, Tariq, um, I, I, I am a full American. Um, You, you just speak, you speak no, your you're rhetoric, not. bro. No, you, oh, no, 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 you're not. No, no. You have a foreign flag. You are a full foreigner, dude, who's ashamed of his homeland. That's why you fled, right? Right. Where you at, Giancarlo? Shit, bro. I'm here on Route 21, Route 3, wherever you want to find me. Newark, Patterson, Elizabeth. Um, I'd be in the trenches, bro. Um, I, most most of your your followers are from probably there. You should, you should resonate but, yeah. with them. You you, try to you, resonate with me. I was. You in the trenches. You are in the trenches, except the trenches of your homeland. That's the only trench you're never in. You're never in those trenches, are you? Giancarlo? Tyreek, where are you from? Like, where's your born state? Like, please, I want to, like, dissect you, bro. Like, I'm trying to... The I'm United trying, States. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to see, like, what... Well, where did you... Where is your socialistic United um, birth? States. You know, um, the United States is where I'm from. That's where I'm from. And I've lived in several states in the country that my family built. And my tax dollars go all around. I'm from all of the United States, sir. That's where I'm from. 
and I didn't flee the United States. I stayed right where my tax bracket and my tax dollars circulate, sir. That's how men do things. And I don't go to some other person's country and then try to complain about them. That's what I don't do. I'm not right? here complaining. I'm here like... like yes, you're, you are. You're, you're so mean, your, your, your lineage, do you not understand yourself? Like, you, you sound like a white supremacist, but a black person. How? Because you are like you you do you hear this rhetoric? Do you think people buy that white rhetoric Jewish game? Do you do you do you see, do you see yourself? You do you see yourself? Be honest with what, yourself. Wait, wait, right wait, here. What's wrong with my, what rhetoric? Wait wait wait. What's wrong with my lineage and acknowledging my lineage? What's wrong with that? Nothing is wrong with that. But but to hear to play this white and Jewish game in front of like different. What the hell are you talking about, white and Jewish? I ain't said nothing about no damn Jewish. But what are you talking about? Why are you so upset with our lineage? Okay, Tariq, you're right. You're right. You're right, Tariq. You know, New York, New York is a. Uh, you know, why? Is, why are you upset with our lineage, dude? Why are you so butthurt over our lineage and us acknowledging our lineage? You're right, bro. You know, like this is why I respect um the Jews because they really live with you guys in Brooklyn. They live with you and they, they, what are you, are you just saying? You just babbling, dude. You don't have no point. You're just saying weird shit. And that incoherent babbling is probably the reason why you had to flee, man. You can't get it together. You are confused. That's why you have to flee. Y'all can't get it together. You can't even get a sentence together, let alone a community. Lord. He's saying all types of random stuff. What are you talking about, dude? I got him out of here. I don't want to hear all that tether babble. Mad at us because we're acknowledging our lineage when you guys acknowledge your lineage all the time and praise your lineage. Like I said, we're the only group who, when we acknowledge our lineage, everybody gets butt hurt. Y'all have the... Latin Day Parade, the Caribbean Day Parade, the Puerto Rican Day Parade, the Jamaican Parade, St. Patrick's Day. Everybody acknowledges their damn ethnic lineage, and it's fine. When we acknowledge it, everybody is threatened. That shows our power, because now when we start acknowledging our lineage and we get on code, boy, people start shaking in them boots, don't they? Because they know some shit is going to get done. When we start acknowledging our lineage and getting on code around our lineage and our culture, because, see, we're the ones, we got the real culture. We have the only significant global culture that's globally recognized, that has gotten things done. With honor. See, the degeneracy that's thrown on us, that's brought, it's always brought by outsiders. Let's, let's get real for a minute. When we have degenerate stuff that happens in our society, foundational black American society, notice it's always brought in by outsiders. It's always some outside influence. If there's a drug culture within our midst, the drugs are brought in from other people. It's brought in from foreigners. Even with the whole twerking stank culture that we got now, all of this open twerking nonsense, Y'all know that was brought in by outsiders. That stuff was brought in in the late 80s, to be honest, by Caribbeans. If you want to keep it a thou, I'm not trying to dump on you, Caribbean family. But remember, they were running around in um, the Caribbean. That was part of their culture, running around doing the carnival thing with the feathers and the ass out running, twerking in the streets. That was a Caribbean thing that they brought in through Florida. And then it started spreading in our culture nationwide. But yeah, they brought that in. If we're going to keep it a thousand, you know, and it was cute to see some asses shaking. Like, oh, damn, look at that. And then it just rolled and snowballed. And now here we are. Here the hell we are. So a lot of the degenerate stuff was brought into our culture from outsiders. We got to keep it a buck and acknowledge this stuff, man. That's why a lot of the non-FBA people love to see the degenerate behavior 
continue. Look at all of these blogs and websites that promote degenerate behavior with black people. It's always these tether run blogs. Almost every popular blog that's out here that's supposed to be urban run by tethers. Almost every single one without a damn exception. Bossip, Madame Noir, Media Takeout, Shade Room, all of them. Now, Ebony and all of that shit is tether run. If we're going to keep it a buck. And we're acknowledging this like, hey, man, how come all of these non-FBA groups are the ones kind of gatekeeping the information that's coming to our community? And they're reporting certain elements to the world. Why are these non-FBA people the spokespersons for our culture? We're questioning that. And we're saying enough is a damn enough. We're saying enough is enough. I don't want the fresh and fits speaking for black society. You, you, you understand? That's who these corporate entities platform to speak for us as us. They get some quote unquote black people who have nothing but contempt for foundational black American society. Yeah. Acting as spokespersons for us. The Jesus and Miro niggas. Corny ass folks acting as spokespersons for us. We're saying enough is enough. These cornballs, tethers, they are, they gotta go, man. I don't want these people representing us. And that ain't xenophobic. Y'all don't let us misrepresent you. We don't want you misrepresenting us. So I don't give a shit about y'all calling up mad. We're cleaning house, nigga. That's what it is. Y'all do not let us represent you at all. And when we're delineating and we're saying, hey, we don't want nobody misrepresenting us. And now we're going to focus on our lineage. And now we ain't doing the black and brown thing. That's what old dude was calling mad about. Because now you can't eat off the black and brown train. See, we're drying up a lot of these gravy trains. We done dried up the Pan-African train. We're drying up the black and brown train. We're drying up the minority coalition train. We're drying all of that up. Because we're been, we've been the only ones fueling it. You see? And now we're talking about doing some stuff specifically for us. Now the anger comes out. They can't even articulate the anger. The dude called up here saying random stuff. Hey, you say something about Africans and the Jews and leprechauns, man. What are you doing? You're a fool. What the hell are you talking about? He's just saying random shit. They don't even mean nothing. Man, I've been on here for a long time. And we got how many people in here? 840 people at what? Two in the morning. First, of all, I need to get my ass to, to bed. And I know some of y'all, what time is it on the East Coast? Two, three, four, five. It's almost five in the morning on the East Coast. So some of y'all got to get ready for Sunday school. Some of y'all are coming in from the club. Some of y'all are driving home from the strip club. So you still got um, stripper must on your clothes. Some of you are going home right now with that stripper must. All on your crotch. And y'all got to get y'all bath on and get ready for church. All right. Let's get some other people here. Let's get um, Lachey. Let's get Lachey in here. Let's get a sister in here. And some of y'all brothers, I got that deodorant coming. So that'll help with the stripper must. If you get a musty stripper, hit up with some of that um, deodorant that we got coming out. We're making this deodorant so that you can take it with you. And if somebody needs it, you can just hit them with it a little bit. What's up, Miss Jehudi? I wanted to comment on what you was talking about, how they upset, how they upset with us. And I think they're upset with us because someone, an African today mentioned how we're afraid of competition with them. And it, it kind of dawned on me and the light bulb went off. And I'm like, oh, so that's what it's been. They feel like we're their competition when in reality, any and everything that we've got, we've been willing to share with them. 
and they're been, they're yeah. in, they've infiltrated any and everything that we had to share with them and the guys that take us down. So they've never really been allies like some of them claim to be. They've always been in hidden competition with us. And now they're upset because yep. we peel back the veil on that. And they don't know how to take that because they're like, okay, well, now how do we attack them if we can't get inside? Real talk. That's exactly what it is. So they, they look at us as being another competitive tribe, just like over there in their homelands. They badger each other upside the head. Um, they compete with each other. They they backstab each other, unfortunately, over there in these countries. They do not get together at all. Um, these tribal beefs keeps everybody disenfranchised. And then, unfortunately, they bring a lot of that over here and look at us as another tribe that they can undermine. Let's get Andrew in here. Tariq, I want to hear more about the stripper musts. Tell me what oh. that smells like. I've never, I've never, I'm unfamiliar. The, yeah, the stripper must, man, it's a thing. It's a it's a real strong scent. Man. Andrew, where are you from? Yeah. I'm from New York, bro. There you go. Um, so what's on your mind, man, besides stripper must? What else is on your mind? Well, you know, I was I, I, I was curious. There, There's a lot of vernacular that, you know, that you make very clear that, that I don't understand. So I, I'm kind of here to learn. And when I hear things about, like, <laughs> The terminology like stripper must or going from the strip club to the to the church in a few hours. Tell me about where that comes from, Tariq. Like, okay. well, how, is that, how is that so familiar to you? Okay, well, shit. And I'm just throwing some stuff out there. But um, what really is on your mind? Because I don't want to get into non sequiturs. I mean, what we've had like a two hour conversation here about a vast array of things. So. Um, what are some of the things that you really have a problem with? Because I don't want to get into semantics. Let's, what, what do you really have an issue with? I don't, I don't know if I have an issue with much. Um, I was wondering if you, if you caught the new uh, Fresh and Fit episode. Right, okay. So you're, you're fans of Nick Fuentes and Fresh and Fit and all these guys, right? Oh, I just wondered if you, Fresh and Fit seems more like it's up your alley, so I was wondering if you caught the episode. Right. Um, but you are a fan of Nick Fuentes, right? I, who's that? I have no idea who that is. If you know who Fresh and Fit is, you know who Nick Fuentes is. Oh, the the, the guest they had on? Yeah. I thought he was a pretty handsome kid. I uh, had a lot of great talking points. Right. I don't, you know, <laughs> I'm not too familiar. So right. I was wondering what you're... Notice, like I said, how that Ethiopian dude... And the white supremacist, this is a white supremacist, by the way. Notice how they try to play dumb and they get into the trolling thing. They play dumb and then they try to get into the trolling thing. All right. I'm just using you as a case study right now to kind of prove a point, Andrew, how a lot of the white supremacist tactics are with you guys. Y'all try to play dumb and then you get into the semi-trolling thing. That's why I told the guy earlier I wouldn't debate a Nick Fuentes because he would do what you're doing, just get into this goofy tap-out trolling. Y'all troll to tap out. But um, anyway, Andrew, um, your, your trolling material is kind of fizzling out fast. I don't think you thought that you'd have to crash out so early. Any last words, Andrew? Yeah, I was we're just wondering if you caught the episode, wondering if you what your thoughts were on it. Yeah, I, I haven't heard it yet, and I don't really, I don't listen to Nick Fuentes. Oh, we're not. We're you're not doing the most one of the most popular shows on the internet. You're not going to listen to it. It's an Afrocentric show. I thought you'd get you'd catch it. What's Afrocentric about him? No, 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 not about him. You keep fixating on this Fuentes character. I'm talking about the show. It's one of the most popular black shows in America. But you don't want to, it's not on your radar? Um, I don't listen to it. Why would I listen to them? I don't know. I, I, because, again, it's one of the most popular African-American imprint on pop culture in America. So and I thought you would caught, I thought, I thought it was on your radar. And that seems like something you should be tracking. Well, crystal meth is a popular drug, too, and I don't smoke it. So, damn, just because something is popular with white supremacists, that doesn't mean that I want to indulge in it. So why would I indulge in that? It's popular with white supremacists. Yeah, I mean, you just sort of proved the point on the non sequiturs. And, I, you know, Tariq, same old, same old with you. you you're, you the mask falls off. We got the IQ. It's It's the same old, same old, buddy. So... 
Wish you do. Have have a great night, man. I wish you the best. Oh, okay. And by the way, um, okay, he bounced. Okay, yeah. See, he crashed out. The white supremacist trolls, they think they're slick, and then his troll, his trolling couldn't get no traction. Same as same as Rick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't falling for none of the troll bait. See, I, I caught on that he was a troll early on, so that just kind of that that snatched the rug from his trolling. Cause see, part of their trolling, it only works if you don't really realize that they're trolling and I immediately caught on he was trolling, so it fizzled out real quick. Fuck, dude. You know what, Trick? You listen to Nick Fuentes? Who is that, dude? Oh, stop it. You know, the white supremacists are the same. These people, man, listen. This is why we go in on them. It's easy to debunk them. Um, white supremacy is all about dominance. It's not about logic. You can logically destroy their talking points very easily as we've seen that's why they have to reduce themselves to trolling and this is why we got to be on our square when we're dealing with white supremacy it's not a logical thing these people are not logical it's run by brute force and we got to understand that and we have to understand that these folks are very insecure because power is a very tricky thing Power can be toppled very easily if you don't really stay on top of your game. So they're very sensitive about what we're doing. That's why these white supremacists stay in our spaces, monitoring what we do. Have y'all noticed all the white supremacists that's been in here tonight, the last few hours? Why y'all think there's damn near 900 people in here in the middle of the night? Half of these people are white supremacists. They study what we do. They study us heavy. They study our culture. They study and know our culture more than we do. See, this is why I study what they study. And you know what they study? Us. Yeah. See, black folks get into this thing when ain't nobody supreme over me. I ain't thinking about the white people's. I ain't thinking about the white supremacists. I'm going to sit here and drink my lean and do me. I'm the king of my castle. Right until one of these white supremacists shoots you. Oh, shit. Where Tyreek at? You know, the, the main ones who ain't studying them are the main ones who get hemmed up. I study these white supremacists. I see everything they doing. I've, I've, they monitor us. I monitor them, too. That's why they in here. They in here, and I'm over there watching your ass. I'm watching you. And one thing I noticed, boy, they study our culture. They study every nook and cranny of our culture. And they study our past cultures, a lot of stuff that we didn't forgot about. That's why we got to start bringing a lot of stuff back to the forefront. Wait till you uh, the, the deodorant that we have, the deodorant brand. The launch is coming in a few weeks. That's based on some of our ancient foundational Black American culture that the white supremacists, they've been studying. They've been studying some of our medicinal practices that we used to engage in during slavery and during the Jim Crow era. We were really on top of our medical game as far as healing and all of that. We were really on top of our shit. And they studied that. They studied it then and they still study it. And they got us afraid of that. You know what I'm saying? They have us afraid of studying some of the cultures that we engaged in during slavery and after slavery. Some of the stuff that we had going on. I'm going to go more in depth into it in a couple of weeks because that has a lot to do with the brand that we got coming out now. That has a lot to do with it. I'll keep you guys posted on that. But the new deodorant is coming. The new deodorant launch is going to be popping in the next couple of weeks. Y'all stay tuned for that. Um, Hidden History Museum. Y'all need to come on down. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. We got a couple of events coming up. So you guys need to come through. Hidden History Museum. And give your contribution. Everybody should give a recurring contribution to the museum to keep everything popping. 
Get the movie American Maroon at American-Maroon.com. Very good movie, ladies and gentlemen. Get your FBA flags at official fba.com and get more information about our culture foundation of black american culture official fba.com anyway y'all let me get out of here because we've been here for a long time we've been up doing our thing and i appreciate everybody for staying up damn you know i'm looking at the time we've been on for damn near three hours family and we've been on here and i appreciate all you guys for staying up and chopping up gang with me man much love to you guys, man, and I will bid you a farewell in the foundational Black American Tut language, Papiakute and Lola Vuve to you.